you everybody for showing up. It's, uh, it's always encouraging when the room fills up like this. They have to bring out other chairs. That was great. Uh, bear with me just a minute. I get this thing set up. It's going to switch on me. I hate Windows 8. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Jesuit saying that, uh, here we go. Give me the child until he is seven, and I will show you the man. And this, of course, refers to how susceptible young children are to religious and cultural uh, conditioning. When we're very young, we're capable of learning far more and much faster than at any other time in our lives. Those who take advantage of this information absorbency have shown that it is possible for toddlers to learn multiple languages and accelerate into advanced mathematics even before other kids can find out about multiplication tables. However, most kids get uh, no formal education until after the learning curve has waned, and what they get after that is usually inadequate for first world nations. What we're taught and how we're taught during that formative period can have a profound impact on who we are and how we think forever afterward. And that has a stifling effect by design. There are studies I can cite which imply that religious biases can impede cognition and recognition, attention and perception, that atrophy of one area of the brain uh, in elderly people has been linked to depression, dementia, and Alzheimer's disease, and the same diminished capacity has also been associated with religious experiences, including the notion of being reborn. According to another study, the belief that one has a relationship with God <coughs> is associated with the reptilian brain, while experiencing the fear of God is associated with a reduction in another area of the brain, but an increase in that same area of the brain has been associated with pragmatism, not only the quest for truth, but also a rejection of the belief in gods. And according to another study, there is also links between the brain's dopamine production and religious experience, belief, and behavior. This was suggested by several lines of evidence, including the fact that a variety of clinical conditions related to dopaminergic dysfunction, things like mania, obsessive compulsive disorder, schizophrenia, and temporal lobe epilepsy are regularly associated with hyperreligiosity. And if you find it significant that the same regions of the brain correlated to religiosity are also correlated to schizophrenia, this same study promotes LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, DMT, and ecstasy as especially potent drivers of religious experience. <laughs> this is not to say that religion can be cured with Thorazine, although maybe in some cases. <laughs> I don't really know how conclusive these stories are. I cite them only because they give me a chuckle. What I can say for certain is that there is no demonstrable truth to any religious claim. They're either not evidently true, or they're evidently not true. And there's a lot about religion that we can show to be false, and nothing fails like prayer. But uh, with regard to the effect of education on intelligence, I seriously think that the clearest way to regard the, uh, um, or to know the detrimental effects of the generations of being subjected to religious indoctrination, one need only look at the current American political situation as a result of that. <coughs> I think you guys don't know this guy. Um, oh, rat. <laughs> okay, so in Georgia, they put a guy on their science, space, and technology committee who says that evolution, embryology, and Big Bang cosmology are flies from the pit of hell. <laughs> And we took a science-denying young Earth creationist from Texas and put him in charge of NASA. A search of the many laughable quotations from any of the idiotic ideologues in power in my country will convince you that, or will prove, that my country has been reduced to an idiocracy. The people we put in charge not only do not know what they're talking about, they don't even believe in it. They have no education or understanding in any of the matters over which they preside, and they're not relying on the, on the advice of experts either. In matter of fact, they brag that they have to stand up to the experts. 
And this is a reference to the former chairman of our Board of Education, when the testimony of several dozen scientific specialists was collectively ignored and rejected by a willfully ignorant dentist. And that same dentist also teaches at a Christian school where he told his, his uh, congregation of fourth graders to keep chipping away at that empirical evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Illustrating that it's not about what's understand, you know, understanding what is really true, but believing what you want to believe, even when you know it's not really true. A year or so ago, te the Texas Republican Party platform actually said that they are against critical thinking, that they are opposed to higher order thinking skills, which mm -hmm. might challenge or might. Uh, Challenge a student's fixed beliefs. And I don't think students should have fixed beliefs. The very idea of that is wrong. Because it not only goes against science, it also goes against the purpose of education. The only way to improve your understanding is to seek out the flaws in your current perception and correct them. And you can't do that if you already imagine that you have the absolute truth and you insist that no amount of proof will ever prove you wrong. But that is the nature of faith. Faith is an assertion of unreasonable conviction that is assumed without reason and defended against all reason. Instilling faith is the purpose of religious teaching, but it uh, is also used to instill right-wing conservative politics too. In places like Texas, where lessons in science, sex, and social studies are censored or distorted, by religious influence, the contest, is not, uh, the contest is not just over what students may know, but what they may believe. It's treated like a struggle over their soul, and the only way to be saved is to be convinced of things that are unsupportable or indefensible or have already been proven false. Whenever anyone adopts, adopts a religious doctrine, it's usually the one that they were trained in as a child. Uh, before they were old enough to raise the eyebrow of analytical scrutiny. Because it takes a special kind of adult mind to walk into an unfamiliar religion and still find it credible somehow. Unless, of course, you ignore or fail to explore all the details and only accept the vague general notions unexamined, which I'm sorry to say is what Christians typically <coughs> do. If you want people to know the whole doctrine and still believe it, and swallow it all as a package deal, uh, despite all the obvious absurdities, atrocities, inconsistencies, and contradictions, then your only option will be either to beguile the ignorant or the innocent. Because you have to convince those who literally don't know any better. You're going to have to package your propaganda in a very misleading way, um, in hopes of confusing the undereducated, or you're going to have to imprint it on very young children before they reach the age of reason, which is typically said to be seven or eight years old. <coughs> it must be done thoroughly and systematically, always asserting complete conviction while prohibiting any curious inquiry which might throw the entire baseless, bit of baseless speculation into question. This has been a concentrated effort in the United States for more than 100 years. William Jennings Bryan was a prosecuting attorney at the Scopes Monkey Trial of 1925 when it was illegal to teach evolution in school. Bryan was also a presidential candidate and he summarized the point, position of the religious right when he said, the parents have a right to say that no teacher paid by their money shall rob their children of faith in God and send them back to their homes skeptical or infidels or agnostics or atheists. By the way, the way I would define those, the last three of those categories are all one and the same thing. If anybody just identifies as an agnostic, almost certainly they're actually atheists. They just don't realize it. Help them along with that. <laughs> uh, William Jennings Bryan also said, if we have to give up either religion or education, we should give up education. And this should help you understand that in the mindset of religious extremists, whether you believe it, matters more than whether it is true. Creationism is a, is a form of religious extremism, and it is critical to fundamentalists that students believe in the sacred fables and not understand or even know about the actual facts of the matter. 
which cannot be evaluated honestly, but instead must be distorted or perverted or concealed. <laughs> Several years ago, I had a, a moderated online debate with a pair of evangelical ministers. We had close relations with our State Board of Education. And I naively believed that once I showed them clearly and proved the mistakes that they were trying to, uh, to present in class, that they would honestly concede and not try to push those particular falsehoods. But they surprised me by shamelessly admitting that they were lying and that they knew it, but that that didn't matter. One of these people said, for example, that he knew that there were transitional species in the fossil record, but that he wanted to teach students that there were none, because he said, it's important that they believe that there are none. Um, so we're dealing with a position that has neither honesty, nor credibility, nor accountability, where the ends justify the means, and where it doesn't matter what the facts are because it doesn't matter what the truth is. All that matters is whether they can make people believe a required conclusion with no demonstrable truth in it. For preschool kids, that process starts at home. Various organizations have published many different videos and activity books designed to build faith. And that is exactly the opposite of their being able to examine something critically or think about it logically. In this case, it means to completely convince the kids that Jesus' magic and devils and damnation is real, and that everyone believes it, and that you better believe it, or else. They promise an impossible prize that they'll never have to pay up because it's not going to be paid until after you die. And this is weighed against the threat of a fate worse than death who all, for all of those who can still doubt, who have some power of reason. Uh, the only rewards are for those gullible enough to believe, and that is the ultimate criteria for redemption. It is a very powerful method of mind control, and adults who manage to come away from this type of indoctrination have reported nightmares from a lifetime of forced conformity and systematic inculcation. Then when kids are old enough to uh, go to school, the parents have a choice. Those who can stay home with the kids may choose to homeschool them to keep them away from the world and all its evil influences. They actually talk like that, like there's the things of the world and all of that is bad. And that they are not of the world and they need to keep themselves separate and stay out of it and live in a bubble of dreamlike <coughs> nonsense like strawberry fields where nothing is real. And most of these parents homeschool so they can teach their religion and keep their kids from learning about evolution. And many of the, there are so many <coughs> parents doing this that the keynote speaker at a convention of homeschool parents was Ken Ham of Answers for Genesis Ministries. That and there are textbooks designed to be used by homeschool parents who are specifically interested in promoting creationism. For example, the Abeka Creationism textbook lists among its chapters a matter of origins. It pretends that there are conflicting views of human <coughs> history and claims to give evidence of a global flood when the entirety of mainstream geology insists that there is no such evidence. And uh, the next chapter is Lie True because it talks about the lack of intermediate fossils in the fossil record, regardless how many hundreds of them we actually have. And it pretends to present evidence against evolution, which they call a mistaken belief. <coughs> so this is systematically lying to children. I can find no justification in this. And it's not like they don't know. It's not like they have a right to believe something that they might be correct about. They know they're wrong. And it's, when they say believe, put the word make in a hyphen right in front of that. Because make believe is actually what it is. I'm being completely serious about that. One of the reasons that I feel that I can be so confident in making that statement is when someone tells me that they can prove that I'm wrong, I'm all ears. Let me hear your argument. It will end up being ridiculous, I suspect, because I've been doing this for decades and it always is. But when I tell them that I can prove this point, fingers and ears, they already know that I can really do it. And they already, they already tell, they tell me things like, why can't I believe what I want to believe? meaning that they all 
already suspect that what they believe is not actually true. So understand that kids who are educated this way are repeatedly taught all the wrongest arguments against science and the worst